Okay, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Roger Azevedo, who is a professor of psychology at North Carolina State, uh, so representing the interdisciplinary nature of cyber learning research. We're moving to another field. Uh, he studies cognition, metacognition, affect, and motivation during learning and problem solving. Um, and he's going to talk to us today about multimodal research. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. All right. Uh, so I've been struggling with the idea of genre for many years. <laughs> and, uh, so today we call the John meta learning. So this is about uh, an extension of about 18, almost 18 years of focusing on cognitive and metacognitive self-regulatory processes. And the idea is, can we come up with a genre called meta learning where we can augment humans' ability to understand and reason with real-time multimodal channel data. This is learning data, okay, with intelligent virtual humans. So the key factors here are that we have instruments and students that you'll see on the left-hand side that are doing a geospatial analytic task using tangible computing, and I'll go into the details. We have intelligent virtual humans. They can be also robots. Those are the folks in the middle. They play a key role, and those are the ones I'm going to elaborate in a couple of slides. And then we have data scientists on the right-hand side who are also instrumented because they are watching the real-time multimodal data that's coming from the students who are engaging in problem solving. And the question is, if we're going to train the next generation of data scientists, what do they know? What inferences do they make about real-time multimodal data in real time? And then what is the role potentially of intelligent virtual humans to facilitate both the researchers, the data scientists, and the learners in the same time. And I gotta admit that this is basic on, based on a uh, initiative, um, a proposal that we wrote last year for part of the chancellor. We have a new chancellor at NC State. And I assembled a team including our, my dear colleague James Lester for computer science, but also colleagues from geospatial analytics, uh, industrial systems engineering, electrical and computing engineering, statistics, and uh, yeah, and eventually design. So let's get on with it. So typically the, the framework, basically, if we had took a snapshot, it would look something like this. So we're going to start with the box on the left-hand side. So here we have two learners. They happen to be graduate students. They could be undergraduate students. They can be middle school students. It doesn't really mean you can swap out the students. They can be scientists. They can be really anyone. It could be a FEMA uh, representative interacting with somebody who owns a condo who's actually going to be inundated. And what decision do I make in terms of resources? Should I leave now? It could be a weather meteorologist. These students, the important thing is that these students are engaging in collaborative problem solving and they're, they're instrumented. If you notice, one is wearing the EEG, the other one is wearing a portable eye tracker. We also have the computational model as they interact with the tangible computing because their goal is to stop the inundation of the coastal region of uh, North Carolina, and that's what they're working on, okay? So, we, so as scientists, we collect multimodal, multi-channel multi multi data. The question is, it's a lot of data. What does that tell us about the cognitive affect, the metacognitive motivation, even social processes? Hard enough for us, okay? The question is, if we're gonna change, imagine now, we're trying to figure out on the left-hand side, number two, is a data scientist. So that can be an undergrad student in psychology or statistics, it can be a graduate student, it could be somebody who works at SAS, it could be basically any kind of data analyst. It could be somebody working at IBM, et cetera. Policy maker, et cetera. That person is also instrument because a psychologist, I want to know how the instrument, the data scientist, is making inferences about the multimodal dial channel data that she is observing in her visualization tool. Okay, so the question is, we're also collecting multimodal data on her so that we can understand if she looks confused when she's looking at the physiological data of those two students, the question is, why is she confused? Because we need to know the source of confusion, for example, or the fact that she can't monitor because it's a multiple display, and the question is how do I coordinate all these informational sources, and more importantly, what inferences about the learning, about the reasoning, about the affect of these students that may impeding the problem solving, et cetera. Now, of course, we're limited as humans, so now we go to box three, because now, for example, in this trilogy, there is a role for IVHs, so it can be an uh, intelligent virtual human, it can be a robotic uh, robot, it can be a set of virtual humans, they can be ubiquitous, they can be embodied, they can be distributed, okay? And the question is, if you notice the arrow, is the virtual humans can obviously have direct access to the multimodal, multi-channel data that we're collecting from the students who are solving the problem, okay? But also from the data scientist, okay? And the question is, what can we get the virtual humans to the point where they can engage in meta-reasoning? Imagine the virtual human getting to the point where now he, it, or they, can reach out to the data scientist and say, look, I've noticed that you are not paying attention to the eye-tracking data that is being collected from the students. Why is that? Okay, so, and we'll walk through the, some of the process. I really want to focus on box three in terms of, so here's, you know, for example, an instrumented researcher. Okay, he's got the eye tracker, and he's watching, watching the student in real time. So here, 
got access to the contacts, they can see their face, they can see their affect data, okay, and a little bit of the eye tracking data. The question as a psychologist is, what inferences are they, what are they paying attention to and what are they making inferences about? So, if we focus on box three, which is really what the focus is going to be on, is can we get IVHs? Again, you can replace the IVH with anything. It could be a robot, it can be any kind of autonomous agent that is capable of learning by observing what both the student or students are doing and what the data scientist, data scientist is doing. Can they articulate, okay, their understanding using multiple communication modalities? So think about natural language processing, computer vision. Um, Deep learning, imagine being able to, watching the deep learning algorithms enact in real time and then the data scientist being able to interrogate that deep learning processes, okay, uh, that um, the IVH or the autonomous age is, is engaging in. Can, can we come up with verbal and nonverbal channels to demonstrate also their ability to self-regulate and self-reflect? Can they reason? Can they reason about both the learners and the data scientist multimodal channel data? Okay, can they reason about examining uh, if they see anom anomalous data? Can they project into the future? Can they predict the students' learning trajectories? More importantly also, if we can reach that level of intelligence, okay, in terms of AI, for example, is can they generate hypotheses and inferences based on what they're watching objectively and what they're watching objectively to a certain extent, but based on what the data scientist is doing, okay? Is it based on time, is it event, modality? context-specific data that the human may not be paying attention to, and then can we get the humans, okay, whether it's a student, but most particularly the data scientists, interact with the IVH to view and reflect on salient elements of the data that were ignored by the data scientists. So the question is, is there a particular bias or not? And then more importantly, if we feed back that into both the learners and the data scientists, can they teach, train, and assist the researchers to synthesize the massive amounts of big data to accelerate our I'm going to say this, are impoverished models of learning and cognition, et cetera, because they're very descriptive, but they're not, they're not predictive, okay? So if we're going to build in the intelligent systems, we have to have a better sense of how these multimodal channel data can uh, accelerate our uh, theories of how people learn. Can they augment us? Can they stimulate new, the new generation of uh, analytic techniques? And can they provide in real time scaffolding and intelligent feedback to the learners, so from box three to box one? And at the end of all this, can they accelerate the design, development, and testing okay, of new genres of cyber learning technologies given their massive knowledge and skills and meta-reasoning capabilities? Uh, in terms of interdisciplinary research, of course, we have the usual suspects, psychology, computer science, and engineering. Uh, but of course, um, there's no reason why, uh, especially being at NC State Talk College of Textiles, because we can actually instrument now physiological sensors, so we can have the data scientists also be wearing those as long with the students but also the College of Design, because uh, College of Design folks in graphics, or at least in our college, uh, in our uh, university, are extremely important because now we also have to talk about how we represent visualizations so that they are aesthetically pleasing, but also interpretable and actionable. Thank you. <laughs>